and welcome to my channel. My name is Tatiana. I am starting a vlog series in which I talk about the art of the world in a way that is accessible, fast and fresh. So if you're interested in learning about the art of the world, then please do keep watching. Today we are in Rome. That's actually the dome of St. Peter's. Um, and we're kicking off this vlog series with a personal favorite of mine, Bernini's Fountain of the Four Rivers, La Fontana dei Quattro Fiumi, which is in Piazza Navona. So let's go. Alright, so we are rapidly approaching Piazza Navona. It's just through there. Alright, so welcome to Piazza Navona, one of the most beautiful squares in the whole of Rome. Now notice the long oblong shape of this piazza. In antiquity, it was the stadium of the Emperor Domitian. The space was known as the Circus Agonalis, and much like the Colosseum, it was a space in which horse races, gladiator fights and early Christian martyrdoms took place. And this is Bernini's Fountain of the Four Rivers, the star of today's video. So this sculptural fountain was commissioned by Pope Innocent X and it was designed by Gian Lorenzo Bernini, who was one of the most notorious artists of Baroque Rome. What that basically means is that he was an artist operating in the 17th century in which the art produced tended to be more dramatic and more theatrical and it tended to move away from the classicism and the composure of the Renaissance. Now the fountain was built between 1648 and 1651. Now at the time of the commission, the Pope was actually living with his family in the piazza in the Palazzo Pampili. Now, originally, the Pope was actually going to choose the designs of the Italian architect Francesco Borromini, who just happened to be Bernini's number one rival, and who later built the church right next to the fountain, the church of Santa Niese in Inagone. But as Bernini's biographer tells us, he had a very close friend, Prince Niccolò Ludovisi, whose wife was actually the Pope's niece. Ludovisi convinced Bernini to make a model for the sculptural fountain, which he then secretly installed in one of the rooms of the Palazzo Pamphili. And when the Pope came across Bernini's model, he was immediately won over by the design. And that's how Bernini got the commission. Now you're probably wondering what this sculpture actually represents, what it actually shows. Well, the clue is in the name. Each of these four rather large and muscular male figures represent the four main rivers of the four continents that were recognized at that time. And yes, you heard me right. In the 17th century in Rome, only four continents were recognized. So each of these river gods is accompanied by different animals, sea creatures and elements that somehow encapsulate the nature of their river. All right, let's start with the continent of Asia. This is the river god of the river Ganges in Asia. And as you can see, he is represented with an oar to symbolize the navigability of the river in India. And then you've also got a sea serpent here to represent the serpentine and the twisting nature of this river. Now notice that this figure faces away from the church and at the time of the fountain's construction there would have been an older church in place of uh, what we now see as Santa Niese. This was to symbolize the spiritual ignorance of the continent at that time. Now to the right we have a palm tree and a lion and these two elements bridge the two continents of Asia and Africa as they are elements commonly found in both. This is the river god of the river Nile in Africa. He is depicted with a veil covering his head to show that, at the time, the source of the Nile was unknown. Much like the river Ganges in Asia, this figure also faces away from the facade of the church to show the ignorant paganism of this continent. Moving onwards. By the way, from this side, you can see the back of the line peeking out. So around here, we have a dragon-like sea serpent. And then we have this monstrous creature over here, which is actually a 17th century depiction of an armadillo. Now, now considering its size and rendition, they must have thought them to be these monstrous beasts back in the 17th century. So these two elements signify that we are now in the continent of the Americas. This is the river god of the Rio de la Plata in the Americas. He is sitting on a pile of coins to show the incredible riches of this new land. This river god is actually depicted as a black man, which shows you how little they actually knew about the continents at the time. The river god sits in a reclined position with his left hand raised before his eyes. Now, this has sometimes been read as the figure raising his hand in horror at the appalling facade of the church built by Borromini, which he thought would collapse on top of him due to its poor construction. But in actual fact, this is just pure legend because the church was actually built after the fountain was completed. In actual fact, the figure's raised hand is to show that this continent, unlike Asia and Africa, is starting to see the light of the church. He's starting to be converted. Here we have a snake of the land, and below it we have this fantastic rendition of a horse, 
which is actually the only sculptural element of the entire fountain which was entirely carved and executed by Bernini himself. Although Bernini was 100% responsible for the design of the sculpture, it was actually mostly executed by his assistants, his students at the time. And this is normally the way that it would work, because these artists were busy people, they had a lot of commissions, and it wasn't feasible for them to execute the entirety of their work alone. And last but definitely not least, we have this river god, who represents the river Danube in Europe. The continent of Europe is accompanied by this large fish with a gaping mouth. The Danube's body faces towards the church, representing the triumph of Catholicism in Europe. At the same time, the Danube's upper body turns to acknowledge and support the papal insignia of the Pope at the time, visible on this shield. So this figure is the most composed, cultured and seemingly spiritually enlightened of the four river gods, and this was no accident. He sits upright and he is attentive towards the symbol of the Pope. The papal insignia is composed of a dove, three fleur-de-lis, the keys of St. Peter's and the papal tiara. There is a very similar shield on the opposing side of the fountain, supported by the river god of the river Nile. So seen in this light, the entire sculpture actually portrays the Pope's power in relation to the entire world. You're probably wondering what the tall structure that surmounts the entire fountain is. This is actually an ancient Roman imitation of an Egyptian obelisk, which was found in five separate pieces on the Circus Maxentius on the Via Appia. So that explains the hieroglyphics. At the very top of the obelisk, there is a dove, which was the symbol of the papal family, which contemporaries would have understood. So together, the obelisk and the dove form a power symbol. They represent the power of the papacy, a power that stretches as far as Egypt. So I think we can all definitely agree that this fountain definitely works in favour of the Pope and his family. The Pope's desire was to have such a magnificent sculptural fountain adorning the piazza in order to turn the space into a new central hub of Rome. In fact, there were many festivities and processions taking place in Piazza Navona in 17th century Rome, so the fountain was the perfect medium to proclaim one's power. But the sculpture is also so much more than that. Now, the reason why I love Bernini's sculpture is because of the way that it interacts and engages with the viewer. His sculpture demands to be seen in the round, and so it offers you an immersive and engaging experience. You are forced to insert the sculpture to gain its full meaning. Visitors starting from this point of view would have no doubt been intrigued by this rear half of the horse, and they would have been encouraged to encircle the fountain to complete the unfinished picture. From every different angle, you gain more from the sculpture. So Bernini's fountain almost acts like a flexible narrative, which is revealed slowly no matter which point you start from, until eventually you are told the full story. In this case, you are slowly taken on a tour around the entire world, as seen from the perspective of 17th century Italy. Bernini and his team have managed to evoke so many contrasting and convincing textures, it's actually quite extraordinary. Look at the flawless rendering of the rock. You feel like you would definitely scrape your skin on that. And then contrast that rendition to the realistic flesh of the river god's skin. They look like they are composed of real muscle and tendon. It's almost too hard to believe that all the elements are carved from stone. The actual figures themselves are carved from Carrara marble, while the stone is actually carved from travertine, which is the same material that the Colosseum was made out of. This sculpture is absolutely brimming with movement. Each river god is depicted in a rather dynamic and twisting position, which adds to the energy and the excitement. The host of various sea creatures depicted in animated positions further add to the drama. Much of the movement is due to Bernini's rendition of the drapery. The rendering is highly dramatized. It grants the static art form a high degree of movement. The effective movement is heightened further by the spurting water, which gushes around and whose reflection flickers on the stone, bringing the materials and the figures to life. I would definitely, definitely recommend visiting the sculpture uh, in the evening so that you get to see it when it's not so bright and not so hot. Also, the piazza comes alive at night. All right, so that brings us to the end of the first vlog of this series. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a like and please subscribe to my channel for similar videos that talk about the art of the world. If you have any questions about Bernini's Fountain of the Four Rivers, then please do let me know in the comments down below. Similarly, if you have any requests, any particular works of art that you would like me to talk about in future videos, then do let me know in the comments down below. I would love to hear your feedback.
You can also follow me on Instagram and I also have a blog which talks about everything that I talk about in my videos but in written form. Thank you very much for watching and see you next time.